It was a magical season for the Southeast Missouri State University football team in 2010. After being picked to finish eighth in the Ohio Valley Conference preseason poll, Southeast matched a school record with nine victories en route to posting one of the greatest turnarounds in NCAA football championship subdivision history. The Red Hawks went 9-3 overall and 7-1 in league play, won their first ever Ohio Valley Conference title, and made the NCAA playoffs for the first time in the 104-year history of the program. Fifth-year head coach Tony Samuel, after earning the OVC Roy Kidd Coach of the Year and AFCA Region 3 Coach of the Year awards, was named the Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year. Senior running back Henry Harris earned the league's Offensive Player of the Year award, numerous All-American honors, and finished fifth in the voting for the prestigious Walter Payton Award, which is the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy for the football championship subdivision. A total of 10 players received all-conference recognition, including eight with first-team honors. The Red Hawks' eight first-team selections were the most in a season in school history. Junior Matt Scheibel became the first Southeast quarterback to be named to the OVC first team, and Southeast Missouri was only the second team in league history to have four first-team offensive line selections. The Red Hawks received national attention throughout the season, garnering publicity in high-profile publications like USA Today and Sports Illustrated. The way the success of the Southeast football team brought the Red Hawk Nation together was nothing short of phenomenal, as an average of 8,600 fans saw the Red Hawks play in each game at home this season. Southeast also sold out 9,500-seat Hawk Stadium twice with a school record crowd of 11,126 for the UT Martin game. Southeast ranked among the top 10 teams in the nation in several statistical categories, including rushing offense, third and fourth down conversions, and turnover margin, among others. Records were broken on a regular basis throughout this remarkable season that will go down as arguably the best in Southeast Missouri football history. To begin the 2010 campaign, Southeast Missouri headed to football bowl subdivision member Ball State, searching for its first win against a Mid-American Conference opponent. Southeast and Ball State kicked off the season in front of a crowd of 10,753 at Schumann Stadium on a hot and humid Thursday night. Southeast trailed 7-0 before Mike Jones ran for an 11-yard touchdown to tie the game with 3.21 left in the first half. To the 10-5, he's got the goal line, touchdown! The Cardinals then scored 17 unanswered points in the third quarter to key their 27-10 victory. Drew Geldbach scored the only points for the Red Hawks in the second half when he made a 53-yard field goal on the first attempt of his career. It's headed toward the uprights. It is good. Henry Harris caught a career-high eight passes for 82 yards out of the backfield. The Red Hawks traveled to heated conference rival Murray State to open Ohio Valley Conference play. A fired-up Southeast team went into Stewart Stadium looking to beat the Racers in back-to-back -back seasons for only the second time in school history. The Red Hawks and Racers dueled to a 10-10 tie at the half before Southeast outscored Murray 20-7 in the game's final 30 minutes. Drew Geldbach's 47-yard field goal gave Southeast a 13-10 edge on the Red Hawks' opening drive of the second half. Shortly after Murray State scored to regain a 17-13 advantage, Matt Scheibel completed two big third down passes to key the Red Hawks' next score. 
Scheibel threw a 26-yard pass to Miles Edwards on third and eight before tossing a two-yard touchdown pass to Bradley Brown on third and goal. Brown's second career touchdown gave the Redhawks a 20-17 edge and Southeast would not relinquish its lead. Scheibel's 60-yard run led to a 37-yard field goal by Gelbach to add to the Redhawks' lead early in the fourth quarter. Scheibel then avoided a sack and threw a 26-yard pass to Edwards on third and eight, setting up Southeast's final score. Henry Harris's 33-yard touchdown run capped the Redhawks' longest drive of the night, which covered 86 yards in seven plays. Scheibel ran for a career-high 134 yards, becoming the first Southeast quarterback to rush for over 100 yards in a game since 2007. Harris also rushed for 113 yards, and Edwards added 100 yards receiving giving Southeast two 100-yard rushers and a 100-yard receiver in a game for the first time since it joined the NCAA Division I ranks. Defensively, Southeast held the Racers to under 300 yards of total offense. Aaron Grimes turned in a career-high 14 tackles and had an interception to lead the way. Josh Gibson added a huge sack on fourth and eight when Murray State threatened to score late in the fourth quarter. Southeast ended a six-game losing streak on the road with its win over the Racers and then prepared to take on one of the nation's top programs and border rivals in the Southern Illinois Salukis. Southeast crossed the Mississippi River to face regional rival and fifth-ranked Southern Illinois during week three. The Red Hawks were the first Division I opponent to play in the brand new state-of-the-art Saluki Stadium. The Red Hawks trailed 21-3 with 3.46 remaining in the third quarter before rallying for 21 unanswered points, including 14 in the fourth quarter to take down the number five Salukis in Carbondale for the first time since 2002. Henry Harris rushed for 142 yards and scored two fourth quarter touchdowns, including the game's decisive 67-yard touchdown run. Southeast beat a top five opponent for the first time in school history since moving to the football championship subdivision. Linebacker Derek Borum had a huge game for Southeast adding three tackles, two tackles for loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. The victorious Redhawks returned to Cape Girardeau, led by a police escort. Sneakers pass intercepted by 23, Tyler Rock. We can't celebrate till Tuesday and Wednesday practice. Sure. After winning two of three road contests, the Red Hawks returned to Cape Girardeau and the friendly confines of Houck Stadium to host Tennessee Tech in their home opener on Family Weekend. After a back and forth first half, Trey Lamb hooked up with all Ohio Valley Conference receiver Tim Bedford on a 60 yard scoring strike to cut Southeast lead to 17-14 with 6.59 remaining in the third quarter. Henry Harris, who ran for 196 yards, would then score his only touchdown from one yard out to give the Redhawks a 23-14 advantage with 7.02 left in the fourth quarter. Second and goal from the one, handoff Harris up the middle, touchdown! 
Lamb later hit Benford again, this time on a 19-yard touchdown pass. That narrowed the gap to 23-21 with 56 seconds remaining. The Golden Eagles attempted an onside kick, but Southeast recovered and ran out the clock. Here's the knee, Red Hawks win. Harris carried the ball 32 times and averaged 6.1 yards per carry to help Tony Samuel earn his 50th career victory as a head coach and remain undefeated in home openers. Southeast ran a season-high 87 plays and held a 15-minute advantage in time of possession. The Redhawks also ran a single-game school record 69 rushing plays and finished with 467 yards of total offense against the Golden Eagles. The following week, the Redhawks would take to the road again to face the Eastern Illinois Panthers. Southeast forced a season-high five turnovers and had four interceptions in a 28-13 triumph, the first victory for Southeast Missouri in Charleston since joining the Ohio Valley Conference. Matt Scheibel's one-yard touchdown run gave Southeast its first lead of the game with 11.35 remaining in the third quarter. Two possessions later, Tyler Brock picked off freshman Jimmy Garoppolo and ran 48 yards for a touchdown to extend the Red Hawks' lead to 21-10 at the 6.05 mark. Tyler Brock, a pick six! Southeast added one more touchdown on an eight-yard run by Henry Harris with 6.10 left in the fourth quarter to polish off a 28-13 win. Scheibel turns, hands to Henry, bouncing right back to the inside. He's going to score! Touchdown! <laughs> Henry Harris with a terrific cutback, and he pierces the goal line. Brock accounted for two interceptions, while Derek Borum and Abraham Woodard added Mike one apiece. A swarming Red Hawk defense limited Eastern Illinois to 263 yards of total offense and gave up less than four yards per play. Here comes Borum on a blitz. He's got the quarterback, and he's going to sack him. Harris ran for 179 yards and two touchdowns on 27 carries and finished with 286 all-purpose yards. Southeast had won three straight games on the road for the first time since 1994. After cracking the national polls for the first time in seven years, the 25th ranked Red Hawks hosted Tennessee State in front of a sellout crowd of 10,316 at Houck Stadium. Following a scoreless opening stanza, Southeast exploded for 19 points in the second quarter. That effort was the difference in the game as Tennessee State rallied for 14 unanswered points in the second half. Matt Scheibel threw a 12-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Cox to give Southeast a 19-3 lead with 33 seconds left in the second quarter, and that score proved to be big in the end. Back to throw, Scheibel steps up in the pocket, still looking, throws to the corner of the end zone, caught! Touchdown! Cedric Cox! Terrence Wright scored two rushing touchdowns in the second half, and his nine-yard run sliced Southeast lead to 19-17, with 6.43 remaining in the fourth quarter. That, however, wasn't enough as the Red Hawk defense forced the Tigers to punt on their final possession. Henry Harris and Matt Scheibel each rushed for over 100 yards. Harris ran for 188 yards on 28 carries, while Scheibel carried the ball 16 times for 128 yards. The All-American running back became the first in school history to rush for over 100 yards in five straight games. 40 to the 35, Harris still on his feet. In addition, Harris and Scheibel each rushed for over 100 yards in the same game for the second time. Southeast traveled to Austin P for the Ohio Valley Conference Game of the Week, looking to secure its first winning season since 2002. The Red Hawks erupted for 28 points in the second half to key a 41-24 win and improved to 6-1 on the year. Henry Harris's 10-yard touchdown run and two field goals by Drew Geldbach kept Southeast within striking distance in the first half. Geldbach, it's long Go. enough. It is good. Mike Jones' one-yard touchdown run gave Southeast its first lead of the game 
with 1.21 to play in the third quarter. Red Hawks are going for two. And the Red Hawks exploded for 22 unanswered points in the span of eight minutes to bury the governor. They faked the Statue of Liberty. Jones' touchdown was set up by Harris's 71-yard kickoff return, and the second half route was on. To the 10, coming to the right side of the field, sheds a defender, 15-20. Has a seam, 25-30 to the outside, 35. Harris to the 40, 50-yard line, one man to beat. Down the sideline to the 30, to the 25-yard line, no penalty markers down. Harris also scored on a one-yard run. Tyler Brock returned an interception, 67 yards for a touchdown. Guns it over the middle, intercepted! The Red Hawks have it, Tyler Brock. Midfield to the 45, comes back center of the field, running room, 40 to the 35, 30. Tyler Brock in a foot race to the 10, to the 5, and he's out of bounds. And Matt Scheibel scored on a two-yard run to complete the Red Hawks scoring. The senior running back from Memphis had another huge game, rushing for 152 yards and three touchdowns on 35 carries. He also finished with 308 all-purpose yards, including a career-high 156 on kick returns. Harris became the first in the Ohio Valley Conference and in the football championship subdivision to rush for over 1,000 yards on the season. He's got the first down to the 15. Oh. Barrels over a man to the 10-yard line. First and goal. The Red Hawks return to Houck Stadium for another key Ohio Valley Conference matchup against Eastern Kentucky. Southeast scored 20 points in the first 12 minutes of the game and never looked back. Steve Hendry intercepted a T.J. Pryor pass on the first play from scrimmage. He gets hit as he throws, and it's intercepted by Steve Hendry. Steve Hendry on the game's opening play. And two plays later, Henry Harris scored on a four-yard run to take an early 7-0 lead for the Red Hawks. Handoff is to Harris, starting right up the middle near the goal line. Searches, touchdown! Matt Scheibel threw a 34-yard touchdown pass on Southeast's next possession. Sets up a screen pass, Harris, Henry's got it, blocking 30, 25, 20, center of the field, he's gone! Henry Harris, touchdown! Abraham Woodard's interception then led to a 51-yard touchdown pass from Scheibel to Shante Ahamurfala. First down from the 49 of the Red Hawks. Scheibel back to throw, pump fake. Now he pumps again, throws it deep. He's got Shante wide open, he's got it! He's going to the end zone! Touchdown! Shante Ahamurfala! The Red Hawk defense held the Colonels to only 58 yards of total offense in the second half. Nathan Grass later added two more touchdowns, including his first career TD reception. Drew Geldbach made two field goals to polish off the victory. Scheibel threw for 177 yards and three touchdowns and ran for 89 yards to lead Southeast to its first win over Eastern Kentucky at Houck Stadium. Harris contributed 109 yards and two touchdowns, his seventh straight 100-yard rushing effort on the season. Defensively, Southeast posted a season-high four interceptions. Lofts the pass, intercepted! Intercepted by the Red Hawks, and they'll return it to the 30-yard line, and out near the 35. Just checking in was Kuwaku Arkaful. A raucous school record crowd of 11,126 gathered for Southeast Missouri's homecoming matchup against UT Martin. The Red Hawks shut out the Skyhawks in the first half and weathered a 17-point flurry by UTM in the game's final two quarters to hang on for a 24-17 win. After a scoreless first quarter, Southeast took a 10-0 halftime lead with the help of a seven-yard run by Matt Scheibel and a 24-yard field goal by Drew Geldbach. Joshua Jackson deflected a Derek Carr pass, which landed in the hands of Josh Gibson at UT Martin's five-yard line to set up Geldbach's kick. Geldbach is 10 for 13 in field goals this year. 
And that one is good. 10-0 Red Hawks. Henry Harris closed out the scoring with a pair of eight-yard touchdown runs. The second extended the Red Hawks' lead to 24-14 with 7.08 remaining in the game. Scheibel runs the option, pitch to Harris, sweeping left, gets by a defender, face mask, no penalty, but he knocks into the end zone! Touchdown! Touchdown, Henry Harris! Boy, that was all Henry Harris, too. He got the early pitch, and he had a man right in his face, three feet from him. The defender never touched Henry Harris. Southeast defense came up big again, finishing with three sacks, four tackles for loss, an interception, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. The Red Hawks allowed only 58 total yards in the first half. Blake Piper and Derek Borum paved the way with eight tackles each. Offensively, the Red Hawks did not turn the ball over for a second straight game. Scheibel completed five of 12 passes for 108 yards and rushed for 68 yards and a touchdown. Southeast was victorious on homecoming for the fifth time in eight years. Southeast Missouri hosted Southwest Baptist in its final home game of the season, and the Red Hawks sent their 21 seniors out with a bang. Henry Harris rushed for 293 yards and three touchdowns and broke three records in the commanding 40-14 victory. The win marked the Red Hawks' ninth in a row, matching a school record for most victories in a season. In addition, Southeast went undefeated at home for the first time since moving to the NCAA Division I level. Harris broke Southeast's all-time single season rushing and all-purpose yardage records and single game rushing record in an epic senior day performance. The senior from Memphis, Tennessee became the school's all-time single season rusher when he ripped off a 47-yard run to start Southeast's second drive of the second quarter. Harris's 293 yards broke a Southeast single game rushing record that stood for 41 years. The 293 yards also marked a football championship subdivision single game high in 2010. Both Southeast and Southwest Baptist hooked up in a shootout early on, combining for 20 points over the first two and a half minutes of the game. Matt Scheibel scored the game's first touchdown on a nine yard run. On the Bearcats' next possession, Tyler Brock intercepted Steve Gachette's first pass and ran 39 yards for a touchdown it under thrown, it's intercepted. to give Southeast a 13-0 lead. 15-10-5, touchdown! Harris hit pay dirt on a 17-yard run to cap a 10-play, 59-yard drive at the 7.48 mark of the first quarter. Scheibel threw a 26-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Cox, extending the Red Hawks' lead to 27-14 at the intermission. Scheibel deep over the middle, touchdown! Cedric Cox! What a throw by Scheibel and Cedric Cox with his second touchdown catch of the year. Harris then accounted for Southeast's final two scores of the game. The All-American broke multiple tackles and ran into the end zone on fourth and goal in the third quarter. Henry stops, spins away, he's gonna score! Touchdown! Before scoring on a 10-yard run in the final stanza. The one is getting all the big numbers. From the 10, Henry bouncing left, turns the corner to the five, to the end zone! Touchdown, H2! One of the greatest performances ever in a single game, in a single season. Record-setting senior Henry Harris. Touchdown number three. Southeast registered a season-high 454 total yards and outrushed the Bearcats 445 to 171. The Red Hawks also owned more than a 20-minute advantage in time of possession. The Red Hawks learned later that night that they had clinched at least a share of the Ohio Valley Conference regular season title when Jacksonville State lost to Eastern Kentucky. That meant that Southeast Missouri could clinch the outright OVC championship the following week 
with a win over preseason conference favorite Jacksonville State. But the Red Hawks would have to travel to Burgess Snow Field to face one of the best teams and greatest home field advantages in the OVC. Riding a nine-game winning streak and sporting an undefeated record in OVC play, the Red Hawks notched their highest national ranking in school history and entered what turned out to be a dogfight for the outright Ohio Valley Conference Championship against sixth-ranked Jacksonville State. Both the Gamecocks and the Red Hawks met as nationally ranked top 10 teams for the first time ever, and the game was a classic nail-biter that was not decided until the final seconds. Southeast took its first lead of the game on DJ Foster's first career touchdown reception at the 10:46 mark of the fourth quarter. Foster hauled in a 19-yard pass from Scheibel to give the Redhawks a 21-19 edge. After James Esco's 25-yard field goal regained a 22-21 advantage for the Gamecocks, Southeast used two big rushing plays to set up its next score. Henry Harris broke free for a 41-yard gain, and Matt Scheibel picked up 14 yards. Harris then scored on a one-yard plunge to give the Red Hawks a 27-22 lead with 4.06 left to play. The Gamecocks, however, used a 29-yard pass play from Marquez Ivory to Jeffrey Cameron to get inside the Red Hawks' 30-yard line on their last drive of the game. Three plays later, Ivory threw a 17-yard touchdown pass to Allen Bonner with 11 seconds left to pull off the 29-27 come-from-behind thriller. Harris, who broke Southeast single-season records in rushing and total touchdowns, ran for 134 yards and a score. Meanwhile, Matt Scheibel completed 13 of 22 passes for 145 yards and a touchdown. The Red Hawk defense also forced five fumbles and had three takeaways, with Aaron Grimes posting 13 tackles to lead the way. When the team buses left Jacksonville, everyone assumed the Red Hawks would have to settle for a shared title with the Gamecocks. Little did they know what would happen in the final week of the season. To secure a share of the OVC championship and the league's automatic bid to the FCS playoffs, all Jacksonville State would need to do is beat a 4-6 Tennessee Tech team on the road. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech! Much to the surprise of everyone, including Jacksonville State, the Golden Eagles employed a no-huddle two-minute offense the entire fourth quarter and scored 28 unanswered points to stun the Gamecocks 35-24. With Tennessee Tech's improbable victory over Jacksonville State, the Southeast Missouri Red Hawks were Ohio Valley Conference champions for the first time ever and clinched a berth in the FCS playoffs. This was truly an historic moment for head coach Tony Samuel and his group of Red Hawks. And that'll do it. Watson well, Brown's kind of happy. Why not? What a huge win. A crowd of several hundred fans gathered to watch the 2010 NCAA Division I Football Championship Selection Show and learn who their Ohio Valley Conference champion Southeast Missouri Red Hawks would take on in the playoffs. Southeast drew fifth-seeded Eastern Washington for a second-round matchup on December 4th in Cheney, Washington. The Eagles' high-powered offense featured Bo Levi Mitchell at quarterback who transferred from Southern Methodist University in Conference USA, one of the nation's top running backs in Taiwan Jones, and the most unique playing surface in all of college football, a red synthetic turf field nicknamed the Inferno. The Red Hawks boarded a charter flight to make the nearly 2,000 mile trip to Cheney, Washington and were greeted by over two feet of snow that had fallen on the Northeast Washington region earlier in the week. For many Red Hawks, this was the first time they had been on an airplane or seen this much snow. The trip to the playoffs was an experience in their collegiate careers they will never forget. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
Southeast Missouri's storybook season ended in a 37-17 loss to eventual national champion Eastern Washington in the second round of the NCAA Division I football championship. Through the game's first 30 minutes, the Red Hawks played to a draw with the nation's top-ranked team. A late field goal by the Eagles tied the score at 17 at halftime. Early on, Joshua Jackson intercepted Bo Levi Mitchell's pass on a second and 13 and ran 10 yards for a touchdown to tie the game at seven with 3.05 left in the first quarter. Red Hawks are second in the nation in intercepting quarterbacks. Back to throw Mitchell over the middle, intercepted for a touchdown! Josh Jackson takes it to the house as soon as we said he'd thrown 11 picks. Jackson had 15 tackles to lead the Red Hawk defense. Henry Harris finished his remarkable career with 108 yards and a touchdown on 20 carries. Play of the game so far. Fourth and one Red Hawks. Scheibel hands to Harris up the middle. First down. There he goes. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, down to the eight-yard line. Ohio Valley Conference Offensive Player of the Year, Henry Harris hit pay dirt on a one-yard run to cap an 11 play. 83-yard march and give Southeast the lead at 14-7 with 414 remaining in the second quarter. Out of the eye formation, Scheibel turns, hands to Henry Harris up the middle to the goal line. He's spinning, he's on his feet. They're going to try to push him in. He's close, he's in. Touchdown! What a great run. Second, third effort by Harris. And finally, Matt Scheibel came in there and helped push him into the end zone, or he may not have got in, but he's in. And Henry Harris has now scored a touchdown in 11 consecutive games. The Red Hawks have the lead here in Washington. Southeast battled during the second half and trailed by only seven points entering the fourth quarter. Despite fighting until the final seconds, the Eagles scored 13 points in the fourth quarter to provide the final margin of victory and advance to the national quarterfinal. And credit Eastern Washington. Monumental year, Rick, for Southeast Missouri State. The Southeast Missouri football team will never forget the success it achieved throughout the 2010 season. Southeast's remarkable six and a half game improvement led to the program's first ever Ohio Valley Conference title and NCAA playoff berth. Southeast ranked as high as seventh in the country before being voted ninth in the final Sports Network Top 25 poll. The Red Hawks were a top 10 team for five straight weeks. Numerous records were broken and Southeast saw a major spike in home attendance, averaging nearly 8,500 fans per game an increase of more than 2,500 from 2009. The Red Hawks also finished undefeated at home for the first time since joining the NCAA Division I ranks. The Cape Girardeau community rallied behind their beloved Red Hawks and the story of Southeast turnaround did not go unnoticed. Henry Harris, who was named to several All-American teams and earned the OVC's coveted Offensive Player of the Year award, finished fifth in the overall voting for the Peyton Award, which recognizes the football championship subdivision's National Player of the Year. Head coach Tony Samuel, after earning the OVC Roy Kidd Coach of the Year and AFCA Region 3 Coach of the Year awards, was named the Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year. Southeast posted its first winning season since 2002 and third winning season since joining Division I in 1991. The Red Hawks tied a school record for most wins in a season and held a nine-game winning streak, which at the time tied for the longest in the FCS. We'll be back. The success that Southeast experienced on the field resulted in some outstanding accomplishments off the gridiron as well. J.J. Sanchez was named a second team COSIDA ESPN Academic All-American. J.J. Sanchez! And Matt Scheibel was a first team Academic All-District selection. Southeast also received the 2010-11 OVC Team Sportsmanship Award for football, marking the first time the Red Hawks were the recipient of this honor. 
congratulations, Coach Samuel and the Red Hawks on an outstanding season that will remain in the minds of Southeast Missouri fans for ages. <laughs>